This is my second battery. I have to call a professional. I, I can't do this anymore. Put the ah. phone down. You don't need a professional. I'm here to teach you how to do it yourself. It's not just the battery and the things that cause a car not to start. And we're going to get into it. So that is a common problem that people think that when the car doesn't start, click, 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 I know what it needs, a battery. And they go put a battery in, and then a day later, the same condition. If you're lucky, a day later. All depends how much driving you do. Because when you're driving and an alternator is not refurbishing, like charging up that battery, it's just running off the battery. And that voltage is just going to draw right down. And anything under 9 volts, the car is done. It will not run. That light you see on the dash when it shows a battery, it's actually a misconception that it means the battery. It actually means the charging system. And that's why they put a battery icon there. I know it's confusing, but it actually means the alternator is not working or something in the system is not working. It doesn't mean just the battery alone. On all cars, the alternator is always gonna be located where the drive belt is. So the SERP belt, V belt, wherever you say someone has a drive belt, that's what they mean. It runs the alternator, the AC, the power steering, the water pump. It runs all of those items. So the belt drives all those pulleys around and the alternator, when it's spinning and by the belt, actually charges the battery. Inside this alternator is a stator. It's like a little mini generator. Now they're alternators. And inside is an internal regulator. We used to have them on the firewall for some vehicles. Now they're all internally. Everything is inside this. So it regulates the amperage. The amperage is what charges up the voltage and the voltage charges up the battery. And that keeps the car running. Once the car is running, that battery is actually not doing anything. It's kind of like in limbo. The alternator is what's taking over and running the whole car. In addition, it's charging that battery up for the next time you go to start it or leave the key on to listen to music. So in this video, I wanna talk about how can you check if your alternator is working at home with just a little voltage meter. And we're gonna get into that, but first we're gonna check the basics. You always gotta do basics, because you don't wanna go right to the most difficult thing or assume it's the most difficult thing that you have wrong with the car. So in that case, some people keep replacing the battery. Obviously that's not the problem. With your voltmeter, always check your terminal, see how much voltage is in that battery. But you also wanna check for loose terminals like this, yeah, you don't want to be able to pull that off. That right there is not getting proper voltage and amperage from that alternator to charge it up. Corrosion, look at this. That corrosion actually stops that from charging properly because of all that corrosion. You got to clean that out. And another mistake that a lot of people make is this is not, this is a, you can do maintenance on this battery, shall I say. You can take these caps off. It's not maintenance free. If it was maintenance free, it would be what we call sealed. These caps come off and you can go to each cell that has the battery acid in it. What some people make mistakes, they take this battery and they wet it down and then they take baking soda because that cleans, neutralizes that acid and they sprinkle it. They think they're doing a great job, then they rinse it off. But what they didn't realize what they're doing is taking a chance of it sliding in past this cap and it will neutralize the cells. Then you just killed your battery. It's not coming back. So with a battery that the caps are removable, you always wear eye protection and glove protection because boy, does that battery acid get real itchy on the skin and I don't even know what it does to the eyes, and I don't want to know. So make sure you got good protection on. You're going to take that cap off. You can pick up a hydrometer. This is what they, how you check your battery acid, and it will even self-explanatory, good, fair, or low, and it gives you the voltage or the, that it's at. So you just squeeze the ball, put it down inside there, and pull up that water acid. Now see that battery is at 12.25. We'd prefer it to be up here at 12.6 to 12.5, 13 is actually too much. I don't even know why that's on there. And you also pay attention to the fluid look. See how that's clear? It looks just like water. Well, it's actually acid and water mix. Sometimes when you get a bad cell and you pull this up, you might have little black floaties in there. And that is the lead plate, believe it or not, coming apart. And that tells you you have a bad battery, without a doubt. Now you're looking for a consistency on this meter. You want all the fluid to be within the same span Perfect on this side. All of them are the same. Nothing's changed. I'm, we might as well just go right to the other three and we'll check them. I like to do just three at a time. That way nothing happens to the cell. We'll start right here. 
right in the same range, go right down the way. So this battery is good. We're going to be able to make sure it's fully charged to test that alternator. But first I'm going to definitely clean all this terminals up. I'm going to clean the battery by hand because I can't really put anything on there and let it, I have to dry it, wipe it down. And then I'm going to put it on a charger while I'm cleaning this up just to make sure it's at 12.5 volts. That's the minimal it can be in order to run this test because if it's below that, it's going to not give me the proper reading with that multimeter. All right, so now that we've cleaned our terminal post, charged our battery, fully charged, but let's make sure, and I put my meter already hooked up. I'm going to turn that right to volts. Let's see what we get for voltage. Ooh, 12.8, that's great. That thing took a great charge, so we're ready to go. I'm gonna start this car, and when I start it, we're gonna watch the meter, and it should go up to anywhere from 13.6 all the way up to, could be 15.2 volts. That tells me that that alternator is working. So let's start it up and see what happens. All right, so now we notice that when I started this car up, we we're at 14.3. That's perfect volts. Now, as this car warmed up and the idle dropped, now the idle is going down. Look at that. Now look at how much the voltage dropped. This is battery voltage, right? We started off with 12.89. This tells me that alternator is not working. But pay attention to the little bit of the drop of the idle. We have a running condition here where this throttle body is probably clogged up. Uh, could be several little issues going on. Mass airflow sensor, I'd have to put the scanner on it and see what that's reading to see if that's on its way to set a code. But that shows me it's not working. So if you get this reading and your car's idling normal, say at 1,000, 1,500 RPM, so then that should be up high voltage. So I'm going to show you right now. I'm going to bring this up to 1,500 RPMs, and let's see if that brings itself back up. And that tells me that the alternator is working. It's just right now this idle is so low. It's like at 600 it's ready to solve. So let's bring up that idle. All right, so now I've got it so that it's steady at, this is only 1100 RPMs, not even 1500. And now we know that alternator is putting out the voltage it should be, and a higher RPM it goes up. Let's put it under a load. I'm gonna bring it up to 1500. The headlights are already on, but I'm gonna put the blower motor on high, maybe put the rear defrost on, anything that's gonna pull amperage from that alternator. And let's make sure that it puts out the voltage it should. See how it's steady? Steady putting out the 14 volts under a load. This alternator is gonna be okay. We just have an idle condition that's causing this. But a good way to double check this, we'll take the load off. We're gonna leave the idle where it is. But if you had that 12 volts on there and you're at 1500 RPM, let's confirm the cable's okay. And it is the alternator. Simple steps of doing that. And also before we go over and check anything else, if we have low voltage, reading 12.5, 12.6. With the car running, before you go too in-depth and change an alternator, always, always check your fuse. This particular car, the fuse for the alternator is under the hood. It's called the engine compartment fuse block. And I'm gonna read, I can read here. Sometimes they have numbers. If it's numbers, check your manual inside the glove box. It should tell you which one operates the alternator. This one says alternator right here, five amp. So it's this one. You wanna check it if you don't have a test light. You can always pull it and you can look at it by putting it up to a light. It's hard for you to see, but I can see that the, the amperage wire in there, the piece of metal, is connected on both sides. You can always use your meter. Well, it's here right here. Let's do it real quick. Connect one side. Ready for this? Should read zero at all times once I connect. There you go. That tells me that fuse is good on both sides. I don't need a test light. So now that we've checked all the quick perimeters before you start the car and check the alternator, we know the fuse is good. We know the belt and tension is good. Cables look good. We're gonna start her up and see what our voltage is. I'm gonna hold it at 1500 RPMs, steady. And I got a little prop rod in here to hold it. And that way we can do our testing outside in the engine compartment. So I'm going to leave my negative hooked up to the side of the battery. I'm going to take my positive off and I'm going to go to the back of that alternator 
and I'm going to check it right at the alternator. And if I still have my voltage, then I know the alternator is good and this positive cable is good because this positive cable goes over to the back of that alternator. If I had 12 volts with it running and I went to the back of that alternator and it put out 14 volts, then I know I had a bad cable or connection on this positive going to the battery. So over here at the alternator, locating the positive cable going in, it's going to have a bolt on it. The one with the plug, that's the regulator. But I want to take this plastic protective cover off and I'm going to use a plastic piece, not a metal screwdriver, because if I hit that cable by accident and then I'm touching the housing, it's going to spark and possibly shoot back and burn out a BCM, body control, PCM, or blow the fuse. So let's just simply pop that cover off. Now I'm exposing that alternator stud. And I'm just going to hook up my positive right to it, right to the stud side. Look at that. So I know that alternator is working. I'm not on the cable, I'm on the stud. But I know the cable's good because I've already checked it on this side. So that's one way to confirm. If you don't have 14 volts over here, make sure that cable is not the problem. Go right to the alternator. So if I had 14 volts here, but not here, I have a bad cable or connection. That's one way of checking it. I'm going to disconnect this. I'm always going to put this cover back on because I don't want any problems happening. So now we're going to do a very simple test. It's called a voltage drop test, but I'm basically I'm testing the ground side. So I'm hooked up to my ground on the battery and I'm going to go right over to the casing because this alternate gets its ground through the casing and see how we're at 27, but it's dancing all around. I'm going to ground it out on the housing here. Scrape it, make sure it's good connection and that should hold a steady zero. Now if it said 0.001 or 0.01, that's still normal. Perfect, so now we know the ground for the system works great. So if you had low voltage, you know it's not a ground issue. You already know now it's not a positive cable issue because we went right to the alternator. This system's working great, but like I said, if that read 12.2 volts while it was running, then you do have a voltage amperage issue, which is probably gonna be the alternator. So always check your grounds, check your continuity between your positive and the alternator. So one more thing you want to check before you go in depth of replacing that alternator is always give your belt. The drive belt's overlooked so much of the condition and if it's tight. Now there's no adjustments nowadays on 90% of all the belts, right? But there's a thing called a tensioner. And that tensioner is exactly how it sounds. It's a tensioner, so it puts tension on that belt. And that's just spring-loaded or in this case it's a little shock, like a hydraulic shock that's attached to it. And it puts pressure on that belt, the pulley and where it rides. So I'm gonna do a quick check with it. I'm gonna get my hand down in here and I'm just gonna pull on that belt. And I can feel the tensioner pull my hand right back when I relax. So that tells me that that belt has plenty of tension on it. Plus I would be able to see for a damaged belt, whether it's been skipping or riding. There's no squealing sound when we start it or when it's running. So I'm gonna go with the belt's good. Second thing I wanna check is the connections period at that alternator. You never know if the local rodent had its time for an eating meal and decided to chew on wires. Heaven forbid that should happen. So always check your wires, the connector, make sure everything's good. If that's good and you still have only 12.3 or 12 or even 11 volts coming out of that meter when the car is running, it's time to change that alternator. And don't forget to check out 1AAuto.com where we sell alternators for all types of vehicles and tensioners too if that's on its way out because don't forget, you gotta take the belt off you don't want to do that project four or five times. Do it once, do it right. So if you know me, you know that I could not go away from this video without at least showing you what's going on in the inside of an alternator. So I got the joy of smashing this apart. No, nah, I took it apart. But I wanted to show you, this is what inside of this right here. It looks exactly like this. All alternators are 99% built the same. These little buggers right here, these brushes, with these, this is what usually breaks down because see how they're worn? This piece right here, probably started out that long. And you can see the curve on it. See how it's at an angle? And that rides right here. There's one, two, there's two brushes. They ride right here. They're spring-loaded, so they ride inside the casing. That's the regulator. This is the stator bridge. This is the stator. These are stator connections. And this thing spins. It's like a generator, but it's a high-tech generator. And that goes round and round, and these brushes make the contact, go down that copper wire. They feed the regulator and that regulator regulates the voltage. So you can have willy-nilly voltage, right? Voltage just pumping away. But you can't have high voltage because things would catch on fire and burn. 
So you have to regulate it. So the regulator just kind of brings it down, kind of puts it into an amp, says, okay, we're going, we're going to go with this, and we're going to hold it steady. It's like holding somebody back. So it's holding that voltage back and bringing it down, and it's also turning it into amperage, which you can convert into energy inside the car to operate items. <laughs> so when these go bad, it's not worth trying to rebuild. Just go get yourself a new alternator, and down the road you go. So much easier. Yeah, yeah, I fixed it on my own. Aren't you proud of me? <laughs> Love you too, Mom. <laughs> Jeez, you don't have to be so violent. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe and don't forget to ring that bell because it turns on all your notifications and you won't miss any future videos. Don't forget that steak and cheese you owe me. Put that phone down. Where did you come from? I'm always right here. I'm always here. <laughs> <laughs>